you, Mr. President. Um, I rise this afternoon uh, to express the enormous gratitude the Australian Greens feel for the life and contribution of Tom Uran, and we express our sympathy to his family uh, and his extended family and friends uh, throughout Australia. Tom Uran once said, when asked um, what was his teacher, where did he get his inspiration, he said that uh, life was his teacher. And I think you can see that from his life's experience. As has been said, he was uh, born in Balmain in 1921 and, as a nine-year-old, in the Depression, as Senator Moore has just said, witnessed his mother having to explain to a local committee why the family needed charity. And that really uh, burnt on the memory of that young boy that his mother would be put in that position. <coughs> also, he went on, of course, um, to serve in Timor during the Second World War and experienced the horrors of being a prisoner of war between 1942 and 45, alongside Weary Dunlop, uh, involved in the Burma-Thailand Railway. In 1944, he was transported to work in a copper smelting plant in Japan. Then, uh, as has also been uh, stated, he witnessed that uh, the bombing uh, of Nagasaki and became an anti-nuclear activist uh, from that point. He also realised during that time in Japan, finding his Japanese fellow workers comradely, he said it wasn't the Japanese he hated, it was militarism. And that is something that he stuck to for the rest of his life. He also, through his life's experience, when asked what kept him alive on the Burma Railway, he said it was the spirit of collectivism, of people working together to look after one another in the face of the atrocities that uh, they had to endure. And to his great credit, he was a great campaigner for East Timorese independence, and it was as a result of his efforts uh, in 1977 uh, that the ALP he put the resolution for East Timorese self-determination to the ALP uh, National Conference. Those experiences sowed in him the strong convictions, first of all his uh, depression experience as a social justice advocate, as an advocate for a fair go for everyone, his war experiences. He became a strong advocate for collective action, for anti-nuclear, for uh, East Timor, and of course that led him uh, as an anti-war activist against uh, both the Vietnam War and conscription, and his was the first parliamentary voice to question US military intervention in Vietnam. As his friend, Sister Josephine Mitchell of the Sisters of St Joseph said of him, the thing that seemed to impress Tom was that when he went to Japan later in the war, he got to know the Japanese people more and he realised it wasn't the people that were involved in this sort of action and cruelty, but it was the regime. And Tom had no bitterness, no feeling of hatred. In fact, he said, hate distorts the personality and scars the soul. It is more injurious to the hater than the hated. On his return, he joined the Labor Party in 1951 and in 1957 won pre-selection for Reid, which, as we know, he held for 32 years, retiring in 1990. But in 1969, he became the ALP spokesperson for the environment. And Richard Flanagan, uh, sorry, not Richard, um, Martin Flanagan, asked him uh, when he became an environmentalist. And he said it was when he went back to Thailand and he found that the jungle had been cut down. He built the first Department of Urban and Regional Development and helped establish the heritage conservation movement in Australia, protecting large areas of suburban Sydney from developers. The department's National Estate Program funded the preservation of historic buildings and acquisition of open space. They made the first significant funding of public transport from a federal government. In, in uh, 1972, Justice Hope was appointed as a committee of inquiry into the national estate. It reported in 1974, 
saying that uncontrolled development, economic growth and progress to that time had had a very detrimental effect on Australia's national estate and called for prompt action and public education to prevent further neglect and destruction. As a result, in 1975, Tom Uren set up the Australian Heritage Commission and uh, he set it up as an independent statutory authority and that then established the register of the national estate on which 13,000 places around Australia were listed. He helped to preserve and rehabilitate parts of the Sydney landscape from his time as Minister for Urban and Regional Development in the Whitlam government and is credited with rejuvenating certain Sydney precincts, including Glebe, Woolloomooloo, Parramatta and along the Sydney Harbour foreshore, and he worked tirelessly to secure heritage uh, listings for many sites for the public to enjoy uh, into the future. In setting up the Heritage Commission, he recognised there needed to be an inventory of those places being components of the natural environment of Australia or the cultural environment of Australia that have aesthetic, historic, scientific or social significance or other special values for future generations as well as for the present community. I really want to pay tribute to that because there are many, many places around Australia uh, of cultural and environmental natural significance that would have been destroyed had it not been for the foresight then in setting up the inquiry into the national estate and then the Australian Heritage uh, Commission. And at the weekend I had the good fortune to meet David Yenkin, who was the first chair of the Heritage uh, Commission. And he was talking about those years and what a challenge it was, but of course the enormous pleasure that they all take from the fact that many, many places are saved now because of the efforts of people like Tommy Wren and, of course, uh, David Yenkin and others, of course, in the, in the Whitlam uh, government of the day. Um, when he became deputy leader of the opposition in 1975, he used his influence uh, to campaign for land rights for the first Australians and campaigned also against uranium mining. And after leaving parliamentary life in Canberra, he still continued campaigning for environmental protection of Sydney Harbour and for wilderness areas. He said after his retirement in 1994, I want to help build an environmentally sensitive, beautiful and more tolerant world. And he spent much of his retirement fighting for the protection of those precious places. When asked how he would like to be remembered in 1996, he said, as a person of goodwill, a giver, a fighter for peace, and I think uh, well and truly deserves uh, those accolades as we remember him. He was appointed an Officer of the Order of Australia in 1993 and was awarded the Centenary Medal in 2001, and in 2013 he was made a Companion of the Order of Australia in the Australia Day Honours List, and that was co-sponsored uh, with uh, Julia Gillard, Tony Abbott and Bob Brown, and I think that's a, a commendation of the level of respect that he had from right across the political system, and it was for his work helping veterans and preserving sites of historic and environmental significance. And I note also that he was awarded the Order of Timor Leste Medal, which is the highest accolade from the government of East Timor. So. Um, Vale Tom Uren, you made a great contribution to Australia.